Hey guys, time for Tech News Day. Uh, so for a while there, uh, cryptocurrency really seemed like it was on the cusp of replacing boring old government-backed paper currency and showing those big banks that they were no longer needed. Mm -hmm. We're a new generation, and we use the power of the blockchain to seize our financial freedom. Yeah. Well, that feeling lasted from roughly September to the end of December of last year when the value of Bitcoin went from around $4,000 a coin to just under $20,000 a coin. And then crypto prices started quickly tumbling back down to where they once were and the hype around crypto sort of died off now that the whole get rich quick aspect of it was gone. What a time to be alive and have extra income to throw away. Now in hindsight, the whole thing was pretty ridiculous. You could argue that plenty of people were sincerely convinced that crypto was the currency of the near future and they were just buying their coins at a discount for when they inevitably start using it as their primary form of currency, but most people were just throwing money at it like they were playing the stock market with their only goal being to sell it at a profit sometime later. Not very good for backing up the, the currency and probably one of the reasons that it crumbled so quickly. Mm -hmm. Now that's nuts because unlike stocks, which are primarily bought and sold based on the fundamentals of what a company actually does, what happened with crypto was essentially just a feedback loop. Yeah, people buy Bitcoin, price goes up. People notice the price is going up, so they buy more Bitcoin. The price goes up more, more people buy Bitcoin, and so on and so on, until the people who got in early enough see their money multiply several times over and decide, this is probably unsustainable. I should cash out. Yeah. And that causes a price cascade that results in tons of people being left holding the bag. <laughs> None of this is how currency is supposed to work. Unless... I'm investing in the dollar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unless you work in the foreign exchange department of a Wall Street firm, and even those people are trading dollars for pounds or euros in bulk with just price swings of a percentage point or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, the idea of cryptocurrencies might still seem like an appealing way to spend and receive money, but it remains so wildly inefficient that barely any legitimate business actually accepts it as payment. Some are coming around to it, but in general, not being adopted by companies that yeah. would need to for it to be mass <laughs> yeah. massively successful. You'd need Venmo and PayPal to create their own usable currency in a way that works better than literally just digital money, which is <laughs> what kind of runs everything now. I'd like one cheeseburger, please. All right, let's give it 15 minutes for this blockchain transfer to go through. Well. Bitcoin in particular, being the oldest cryptocurrency uh, built on code from nine years ago, is slow as hell and requires a shitload of computing power to process and verify transactions. Bitcoin miners, aka people who have chosen to hook up a bunch of computer parts to solve complex equations uh, to verify Bitcoin transactions in exchange for a, a little bit of Bitcoin themselves, use a lot of electricity to do so. But how much exactly? Well, according to a recent peer-reviewed study from Dutch economist and cryptocurrency expert Alex de Vries, Bitcoin mining currently consumes at least 2.6 gigawatts, which is comparable to the energy consumption of Ireland. Mm. And that figure could rise to 7.7 .7 gigawatts by the end of 2018, roughly equal to the energy consumption of Austria. And they make a lot of chocolate. Yeah. Or, in, in bigger terms, half a percentage of all the world's electricity. Mm. Exact figures are impossible to know here, but the study makes a very educated guess based on the energy consumption and computational power of the most popular Bitcoin mining rigs, along with estimates of the number of calculations or hashes that are happening in the Bitcoin network at any given time. Well, you gotta spend money to make money and spend energy to find money. Like when you dig coal out of the ground or oh. gold out of the ground or send poor people in to get diamonds. That's right. Children, they got the smallest hands. They can find the, the best diamonds. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, they, the guy we're talking about, he actually takes into consideration a number of other factors like how a room full of Bitcoin mining rigs is probably also running the AC constantly to stop the place from turning into a sauna and therefore ruining a lot of the PC parts. Yeah. Uh, it's, in, it's an interesting study and worth a full read if you care about this kind of thing at all. Bottom line, Bitcoin uses a fuck ton of electricity, which might be okay if we were getting all of our energy from wind and solar, but that's simply not the case. My bit mining rig looks like I'm rolling coal anytime <laughs> I... <laughs> I run mine off of a three horsepower Tecumseh motor that I took off of a lawnmower. It's doing great, by the way. I got 0 .0001 Bitcoin out of it so far. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Paying dividends. Yeah. I also have black lung. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, that the whole wind and solar thing, it's not the case, especially here in the US where our government wants to keep burning coal for whatever reason. Beautiful, clean coal. Yeah. They take the coal, they scrub it down, yeah. now it's clean. It's fine now. The study also doesn't take into account the mining of other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, which adds to the problem. 
So yeah, yeah. So yeah, from the start, Bitcoin mining was designed to become less profitable over time, with not just the transactions becoming more complicated and less energy efficient, but also the rewards for mining being reduced by half every four years. So the next scheduled halving of the rewards is going to happen in mid 2020, so that'll remove a ton of incentive for mining Bitcoin. And then there's the fact that Bitcoin was designed to have a finite amount of coins in circulation, 21 million. There's currently around 17 million in circulation, so we're not that far off from Bitcoin mining becoming completely pointless. And then you can you can all finally upgrade your computer graphic card. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> graphic card is coming in uh, 2020. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, hey, who knows, by the time they get 21 million coins, maybe by then people will actually be using Bitcoins as actual currency and not just a way to turn dollars into more dollars eventually. A seamless plot. Um, having said that, blockchain, probably good for a lot of great things that it yeah. will get developed on. It has a lot of great applications for things outside of yes. Bitcoin. Blockchain basically. probably is the future in a lot of things. And uh, I mean, a few of the coins, like I think Ripple, because it's a private company <laughs> yeah. with like backing a, from like Goldman Sachs <laughs> yeah, and with stuff. a lot of transparency, like yeah. you know who's in charge of it, like stuff yeah. like that has more of a future than the older ones like Bitcoin. They're also a bit more efficient. Uh, but yeah, it's a crazy world we live. I'm still a Litecoin fanboy. I think it, it runs a lot faster than Bitcoin, doesn't take as long, yeah. so maybe I mean, that's the future. Who knows? Right now, we're all just sitting in a waiting pattern. Yeah, it might be the future, but like... It's not the now. Like investing in it as some sort of weird like speculation No, we just as gotta, an investment. We just gotta <laughs> hold the bags until everyone gets their Christmas bonuses again and waste oh it all. Oh my god. That's the key here. That was, that was a crazy like two or three months. It was wild. It gave us something to do though. Like, they gotta make a movie about that someday. And like, also, like, imagine if you had a time machine, you go back in time, just, I don't know, 10 years. Yeah. Like, literally right before Bitcoin was invented, and try explaining any of this shit to anyone. They'd be like... I wouldn't use the time machine for that. What? I would have bought a bunch of Bitcoin for a dollar and then sold yeah. it last December. Coincidentally, with the amount of power Bitcoin uses, you can only go you... back in time once. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Shit! <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of things that uh, some consider to be overhyped, let's move on to Elon Musk news. Yeah, he's still dating Grimes. <laughs> uh, we can already hear you furiously typing away in the comments about how Elon Musk is the savior of humanity. But hold on. Yeah, Elon Musk is cool. Electric cars and solar panels, they're great. Space exploration, awesome. Elon Musk, mostly great. Like cryptocurrency, though the cult of Musk, a bit too much. Much like Rick and Morty fans. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Anything that turns <laughs> cultish is immediately lame. Yeah. Like when people start like just dedicating their lives to amplifying these certain things, you're like, hey, calm down. Something's bound to go wrong right now. Yeah. So uh, you shouldn't take criticism of Elon Musk like it's criticism of your significant other. Uh, unless, of course, your name is Grimes and you're a famous musician whose boyfriend currently is Elon Musk. Then it probably hits a little closer to home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and even if you are Grimes, though, it's worth taking a step back and considering that your billionaire boyfriend isn't perfect. On Monday, Grimes went on Twitter and responded to a tweet from a fan asking her to reconcile her left-leaning views, openly left, with the fact that her boyfriend is strongly against Tesla's factory workers unionizing. Hey, first of all, why don't you stay out of people's <laughs> fucking private relationships, Twitter? But she wrote back, so it's open season, I guess. She did. So her now deleted response read, he has never prevented them from unionizing. Heart emojis. It's quite literally fake news. Trust me, I've investigated this heavily and even visited factories, etc. I have the receipts, but since it affects others, I'll wait till I AMA with imminent new music before I answer more queries. Stop. She, you know what? Like dating, dating Elon Musk is kind of like dating a, a prince at this point, some royalty. They, just like Meghan Merkel, she should have to delete all of her social media accounts yeah. because it, something's gonna go wrong. Yeah, yeah. It, Musk was three quarters of the way there by deleting all of his Facebook stuff. Could have deleted his Twitter and He's Instagram. on Twitter all fucking day though. I, like, I don't know how he gets anything done. It's because he sleeps on that uh, couch in his office. <laughs> That's why his he's, back's it, killing him. Uh, he's investing in that tunnel so he can tweet more. God, I could be able to tweet. So that's why he invented auto drive for his car. He's like, I yeah. can't tweet while I'm driving. This yeah. is ridiculous. You get, you get that, you hear that notification sound. You're like, oh, fuck. Realistically, if you look at everything that he's done, it all comes back to Twitter. Mm -hmm. Sustainable energy. Yeah. Space exploration, launching satellites. Yeah. Mars. You're gonna have a lot of time to tweet on that like six month journey. Oh Mars. yeah, it's, it's perfect. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, the thing is, despite Grimes' investigation and Elon Musk's own various denials that he was doing anything to stop his wor workers from unionizing, there's plenty of evidence to the contrary. Grimes' investigation into 
The hey, honey. <laughs> Grimes' investigation into Tesla is kind of like that surfer dude YouTuber who went to North Korea. Yeah. And he's like, no, I've, it's fine. <laughs> They're actually really nice. <laughs> They're actually really cool. <laughs> You guys took a second to actually understand. No, anyways, Tesla factory workers have previously gone on the record with multiple legitimate news outlets claiming that conditions at the Tesla factory kind of suck and that lots of people want to unionize to improve their working conditions and safety and that Tesla higher ups have actively tried to stop this from happening. Yeah, pro-union workers say there's a lot of injuries at the factory stemming from long work hours and not enough breaks. Some sort of the things that unions exist to deal with, but when they've tried to distribute pro-union literature on company grounds, security shows up and spends half an hour checking their employee badges and making extra sure that they're real employees and not infiltrators. And then, meanwhile, leaked emails from Musk himself have him calling pro-union efforts at the factory a money-grabbing effort from the United Auto Workers Union. Mm. Uh, he's also suggested that some of the pro-union workers are moles from that union. In one email, he promises fun perks instead of unionization. It's like, beach day! Yeah, like company parties, a free frozen yogurt stand at the factory, and a fucking roller coaster to transport employees around the huge factory. We Like, oh my god, this stuff... Anytime a company you've ever that, worked, If you've yeah. ever worked at like a big company... Wow. And they start wheeling out like the fun police and shit They're like that... They're gonna start wheeling out a bunch of pink slips like, real soon. Uh, so 401k, no. But... But guys, you can create your own... Margarita Sundays Mondays. <laughs> Margarita Mondays, and then a month later, huh, not a lot of work getting done. You're fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's actually good in a political sense because, uh, you know, this is a typical liberal looking company, but, uh, you know, got conservative values. Well, that's the whole thing. Elon Musk is a textbook libertarian. Yeah. He's, he, he supports social, like, causes. Yeah. Like, uh, you no, know, to be fair, ideas like environmentalism and shit. To be very fair, sustainable energy shouldn't be a conservative or a liberal it shouldn't thing. Be. <laughs> You're no. right. No, You're but, right. It's, but it comes off as a totally <laughs> liberal thing. Oh yeah. Like, oh, you got oh sustainable energy. La di da. Yeah. It really comes off. Look as such at a this weak fucking person. flower child hippie Elon Musk making billions of dollars. Like you could only be a badass if you literally roll a coal because it. Hey man, you know how loud my pipes are. Uh, like in none in of some that places. You're right. Electricity. <laughs> Boo. That's Teslas bullshit. aren't real cars. <laughs> Meanwhile, they could literally beat most gas-powered cars zero to 60. Yeah. So, uh, we're off track here. Anyways, ultimately how you feel about this comes down to how you feel about unionization in general. And there isn't even a consensus among Tesla factory workers themselves. But to say that Musk isn't anti-union is totally just disingenu disingenuous, yeah. Uh, even if Elon Musk is your boyfriend. Anyway, in other Elon Musk criticism this week, Consumer Reports surprised everyone when their review of the new Tesla Model, Model 3 did not grant the car their coveted recommendation, citing concerns about the car's braking distance, which they found to be way too inconsistent. Yeah, so their brake test involved getting the car to up to 60 miles per hour and then slamming the brakes and measuring the stopping distance. And that stopping distance varied between 130 feet and 152 feet, which is a a lot of variation. Yeah. And uh, that second number, 152 feet, that's longer than the braking distance they measured on the fucking Ford F-150 pickup. Yeah. Uh, Tesla is now claiming this is a software problem and they'll soon be deploying a patch. That makes me really need yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of confidence there. Very concerning. We'll just patch it. Very concerning, especially for a car that's supposed to be able to drive semi-autonomously on highways and like know when to brake. Is this because uh, they use that, uh, the style of braking that creates energy for the engine? Oh, I don't know, regenerative? Yeah. It could be because of that. I mean, because it could switch between uh, the computer knowing whether or not this is an emergency braking situation or regenerative re regenerative braking. That might be something there. Maybe they might have to patch that. Should out. probably be more consistent. Uh, Why didn't they test this before? Well, the whole production of this car seems like it was a nightmare, and yeah. it's a big reason the people at the factory wanted to unionize because they're like, oh shit. Oh God, we took pre-orders for a car five years ago and now we have to make it. Dang. Fuck, everything's going wrong. It's costing too much. Mm -hmm. And now this. Uh, well, yeah, Consumer Reports, they did say that the Model 3 managed to go 350 miles on a single charge. Yeah, because of that regenerative brake. Which is the longest they'd ever measured for an electric cars. And they, they did say it was a fun car to drive. So the review <laughs> wasn't all that bad. <laughs> but it's fun! <laughs> yeah. They just, they, they didn't give it the seal of approval. Yeah. Well, when you're driving this car, you won't want to stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the new tagline. It's free. You can have it. Yeah. Anyways, we want to just reiterate that just because we're saying Elon Musk and Tesla aren't perfect doesn't mean we're saying Elon Musk and Tesla suck. Uh, it's just important to keep perspective about these types of things. Uh, the man spent most of Wednesday on Twitter screaming fake news at people and 
kind of being embarrassing to himself. But speaking of opening up your mind, it's time for a word from this week's sponsor, Udemy, the largest marketplace for online learning. Whether you want to learn something new or just sharpen your skills, Udemy has an extensive library of over 65,000 courses taught by expert instructors. Ever find yourself thinking, I wish I could do that? With Udemy, you can. From web development to digital marketing to Japanese cooking courses, Ooh. Udemy has something for everyone. While other online learning companies charge hundreds of dollars per class, Udemy courses start at just $11.99. Plus, each course comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for risk-free learning. Every day, students around the world choose Udemy to discover new passions, expand their skills, and even change careers. Improve your life through learning. Download the Udemy app to learn anytime, anywhere, or visit www.ude.my slash newsday today. That is www.ude.my slash newsday. Anyways, Phil Arrigo is out this week, which is a shame because we would have loved what he had to say about the next story. You ever hear of uh, mugshots.com? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. A website featuring mugshots and police reports from police departments around the country. On one hand, it seems harmless and maybe even useful. You just type in someone's name, perhaps a potential client or employee, and you can see if they've got a criminal background. On the other hand, being arrested doesn't mean you're actually guilty or that you've been found guilty of a crime. And Things also get much more shady once you start charging a fee to have mugshots removed from the website. Yeah! Huh. That sounds kind of like extortion. Hmm. Because it is. Yeah. Uh, particularly here in California where this kind of tactic has specifically been illegal since 2015. So here's the mugshots of two of mugshots.com's founders, Thomas Kesey and Sahar Sarid, who were arrested last week in Florida and will likely be extradited to California along with mugshots.com's other two owners who've been arrested elsewhere. Turns out this kind of scheme was pretty profitable. Yeah. Uh, according to California Attorney General Xavier Becerra, over a three year period, the site's owners made over $2 million just off removal fees from people who didn't want their mugshots showing up in search results. The best kind of monetization is desperation. <laughs> Again, not everyone who gets arrested is a criminal. In, in the legal affidavit, one such example uh, of this is Jesse T, a Northern California man who was arrested in 2013 and later released without charges. He was unable to find a job afterwards despite applying to 100 jobs in construction and other blue collar industries. Uh, eventually, he realized his mugshot was one of the first things that showed up when you Googled his name. So he looked into getting it removed and saw that you'd have to pay $399 to do so. Yeah, so he found a phone number listed for the site and called them to explain that he had proof that he wasn't charged and that what they were doing was illegal and they laughed and hung up on him. <laughs> Uh, after repeatedly calling back and getting an answering machine, he eventually received a call from an unlisted number, which he recorded, but we can't actually read the transcript because it was basically someone calling him a bunch of homophobic slurs and telling him he's permanently published. Mm. Meanwhile, friends and family found the mugshots.com listing, leading to plenty of embarrassing conversations, and Jesse even believes it affected his dating life, yeah. leading to lots of women ghosting him. He probably did. Uh, his story is not unique either. There's multiple other similar cases in the legal document of mugshots.com fucking up the lives of people who were never even charged with a crime. So, hopefully these mugshots.com owners who now have their own mugshots get to reap what they've sown. Yeah, there was a Reddit thread about this and about the legality of publishing this information before you're officially found guilty of a crime. And mm -hmm. it's apparently, it goes way, way back to where the government needs to be held accountable and people can't just disappear or, or something like that or be thrown in jail for absolutely no reason. So it's a public track record of how the process works so that it's easily referenceable. But having said that, the internet makes this a completely different thing. Well, also there's there are databases, there's background check sites for you to do this. Those results don't show up in Google results. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to check and see if someone's a criminal, there's websites where you, you can you do can that. You pay because you yeah, you're usually an employer. But and, yeah. yeah, this was basically like your name and your listing on this site would show up at the top of your Google results like you didn't have to dig for it. Yeah. People would just find it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Other countries, I think most of the countries in the EU don't allow your identities and your mugshots and stuff to be published before you're convicted of a crime. Yeah. And seems to be see, doing okay, I guess. Yeah. There's good reason for that because mm -hmm. people get arrested and sometimes they didn't actually do anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyways, uh, we got some other stuff for you to watch. New episode of Tugs where what would you do for $100 million? What would you do? for enough money to comfortably live for the rest of your life. And also a brand new Monday uh, live show that you can watch where we talked about the latest Deadpool movie. Check yeah. those out, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.